Long before I ever went dra dragon hunting or sailed the South Seas, I went on a quest in my own land, the wild forest. But the adventure actually began in High Moraway, a small kingdom almost lost in the towering snow-capped mountains that lie between the forest and Erythroth. It all started on a cool spring night, with the frogs singing in the ponds. Leasis, the crown prince of High Moraway, had stayed up long past his bedtime, reading about the Goblin Wars by the light of a single candle. When a sudden sharp breeze whirled in the window of his tower room and snuffed the candle out, he yawned. Lighting it again seemed like too much work so very late at night, so he set the book on the table by his bed and pulled the blanket up over his ears. Outside his door, something creaked. It was the noise that usually woke him in the morning, the floorboards creaking as Ferenkia, the maid, brought him a pitcher of hot wash water. The asses rolled over to look towards the door. It was open, and the faint starlight showed a dark figure. Who's there? Leasis demanded. The dark figure said nothing, but it took a step closer. As Leasis swept the blankets back and sat up, knocking everything clattering off the table, whoever it was flung something towards him. A net. He saw the glitter of its strands as it settled over him, covering him from head to toe even if he tried to beat it off. It was like the nets used for fishing in the mountain lakes, but far, far finer, as though it had been knotted out of spider silk. There were odd, glittering things caught in it. Fish scales? Leasis flailed his arms frantically and yelled for help, but his room was at the top of the empty east tower. He liked the privacy, the feeling that the whole tower was his own place. Now it meant that no one could hear him. The strands burned cold where they touched his skin, rather like the feeling you get when you grab frosty metal in the winter. And then they tightened, as if they were shrinking around him, pulling his arms to his sides, binding his legs together, constricting his chest so that he could hardly breathe. Help! he gasped, much more faintly now. Somebody! Nobody came. After one abrupt jerk, as if his attacker had almost moved to help him, the person just stood there, watching. Prince Leasis fell to the floor, thrashing and twitching. The floor felt different. He felt different. He made a dash for the door, fast as an arrow on his stomach, but the dark figure swooped down and grabbed him around the neck, flipping him into a sack, a rough, dark, musty-tasting sack. The sack began to bounce, as though the person carrying it was walking quickly, and then to jounce as the person ran down the spiraling staircase. Leasis couldn't remember what had happened to his dagger. He tried to grope around for it, but he couldn't feel his arms. He was paralyzed, he thought, but no, he could thrash about violently, so he couldn't be paralyzed. He couldn't feel his legs. He could feel sack all over his body, rasping on his smooth scales. Scales? Leasis opened his mouth to scream, and all that came out was a faint, hissing breath.